Whoa. Our way was blocked by a huge crevasse in a ruddy rock, carved out by wind and rain, as wide as three or four humans lying end to end, and at least three times as deep. It stretched in both directions as far as we could see, looking down over the cliff. I saw something that made me wince. Among the rocks and the sandy yellow ochre floor was a body. Uh, inspect the wall of the gorge to determine how difficult climbing down would be. It wouldn't be easy climbing down there but, uh, where we were, but a few dozen steps away we found a good combination of bulges, cracks, and ledges that would make for a somewhat more convenient path. After a bit of planning, we plotted a route that even an amateur climber could handle. Uh... I could use a rope, or I could use my athletics. Uh, one of us agreed to be the first to climb down the path we'd chosen, so that they could help uh, the rest afterwards. Echo. After rubbing some dust on his hands and peeling off his boots, Ekun dropped below the cliff edge and started climbing down. His deft fingers found purchase even in the smallest of cracks, and his feet found secure footholds along the way. Soon Ekun smiled and waved up from us from the bottom of the gorge. Uh, after a brief rest, he caught the knapsacks we threw down to him, spreading our blankets and coats along the ground, strategically scattering what pillows we had around. He prepared to help us. One by one, we started climbing down. Voices echoed among the rocks, advice from those who'd reached the bottom mixed along with some good-natured nat teasing, laughing with arguing. Uh, suddenly, a stone slipped from under someone's foot and fell right towards the head of those already on the ground. Poor Thorgrim. Uh, <laughs> he had just started to take a drink of water and wasn't paying attention. Don't underestimate the dexterity and reflexes of a seasoned adventurer. Though. Hearing our cries, he immediately jumped away drew his weapon, looking around in a panic as the stone landed beside him with a loud thud. Our whole team finally made it down to investigate the dead man's body. We guessed right, the poor fellow had clearly died on impact. A lot of different types of gear had been scattered around in the sand, armor, tools, and scythes and hammers. Uh, it was clear that this was much more than a single person could carry. We searched the body and looked at what had been scattered across the land. The gear in the knapsack on the man's body was well preserved, but most of what we found was lying on the crevice floor was corroded and useless. Spearheads and swords crumbled at the touch, and the armor had so many holes in it it looked like delicate lace. Uh, if not for the poor condition, there would have been enough to outfit the whole regiment. We also noticed something that couldn't be seen from far above. A large stone stood blocking a hole in the wall. A sickly sweet smell leaked out from the crack. We received a shovel, camping supplies, and rations. Uh, enter the hole in the rock. <clears throat> we all pushed the stone together and it moved with ease, only to immediately realize what an incredible stench uh, in the air. We'd found a small cave, but what was in it? Gods, it was full of charred, half-decomposed bodies, and lying among them were huge gray eggs, covered in some sickly slime. Uh, see if we can determine what the eggs are. Success. We'd never seen anything like them, but one of our party members recalled a story he'd heard from a traveling scientist one late night at a roadhouse. Drunk as could be, the gnome laughed as she recounted the tale of some desert nomads and a gigantic worm capable of killing you with a single touch and shooting lightning from its eyes. At any time, the caravan was lost to the sands. The nomad blamed it on the worm. The female worms were said to gather dozens of corpses together to keep their eggs warm, and uh, with the extra benefit of providing a food source for the newborn worms, other than their own brothers and sisters. Most citizens at the Academia were largely, uh, at large, dismissed the story as superstition, of course. That's when we heard some strange sounds, like someone was moving huge mounds of sand nearby, and the sound was coming towards us quickly. It occurred that it might be time for a tactical retreat, <laughs> or do we try to break the eggs? Hmm. If we break the eggs, Mama will be very, very mad. We'll have to fight an angry Mama.
We drew our weapons and struck at the disgusting eggs. Our steel sank into the dark, into the hard skin and gooey green slime oozed from the eggs. There was suddenly no air to breathe. Tears streamed from our eyes. Our throats grew raspy and we started coughing. It wasn't long before we had to evacuate, but not before we managed to destroy over half of the clutch. The noise continued to grow louder, emphasized with strange dull sounds as though the ground itself were muttering some otherworldly language with the Tricorus tongue. And then waves of sand rose from, uh, from the far entrance at the go of the gorge, and the crest of the wave was coming straight for us. Uh, time to make ourselves scarce. A fountain of sand and dust erupted not a hundred steps from us. From the ground emerged a gigantic, oblong head, attached to a long muscular body with no shoulders. The creature clearly resembled a worm, but, with, uh, but it was thick as a century-old oak. Uh, its hide was covered with warts and oozed a sickly yellow secretion, leaving a wet trail on the sand. Lightning shot from its gaping mouth, lightening up its immense throat. Uh, the air took, us, took on the smell of the storm as the monster barreled towards us. We scattered and looked for shelter. Stealth 46. Most of the team dropped their backpacks and slipped into the crack in a crevice wall, but Thorgrim tried to enter last and couldn't fit no matter how hard he tried. Swearing profusely, he lay prone behind a huge boulder that covered the entrance of the cave. We all held our breath. The worm was so close we could see its dull, tiny eyes. Only the giant's beast's heavy breathing and its hissing sound of sand dissolving as acid dropped onto it broke the oppressive silence. The monster swayed its head back and forth, seeking until it hit its nose. It hit its nose on the boulder Thorgrim was hiding behind. His iron self-control didn't fail him. He stayed motionless on the ground behind the boulder. It felt like an eternity passed before the worm turned and continued its search along the gorge. As soon as the monster was gone, we scaled the wall and escaped the place. Nothing interesting left. Giant's Palm. Hatred, a ferocious smilodon. Start with a crit, that's good. Not take wasted. Chaotic neutral. Uh, let's get it with a, a bone shatter. 23 damage. What is that? Enforcer's robe. Never a good uh, good sign when a giant cat is named Hatred. This robe grants a plus one dodge to AC and plus five to unarmed attacks and damage. It can only be worn by a monk of lawful evil alignment. Interesting.
Follow me. Or don't. See this wolf wolf over here? For some reason, you know its name is Madge. You're just like, uh. Leave Madge alone? Random encounter. Our road once again led to the border Patoks where bandits, unconcerned for the law, often lie in wait for innocent victims. Imagine how surprised we were when we ran into uh instead of bandits, we bunt bunch we bumped into guards. Could it be that King Irovetti was determined to restore order along his border? I've seen all sorts of miracles, but this would be hard to believe. The guard kindly informed us that the borders were closed due to a travel ban. It was not because of a war or a plague, but because of celebration. The kingdom was preparing for the Rushlight Tournament, and the king was busy giving personal consultations to painters, artists, and masters of the stage, who would soon be, soon be responsible for the event. The king and I exchanged smiles, too bad for the poor artists. According to the guard, the king ordered the borders closed to keep secret the details of the coming triumph. The guardsmen were polite but adamant. Fortunately, we had no reason to cha change, to challenge him and fight our way into Pataks. Pataks, sorry. Or someone could disgrace us with an ignorant question about the tournament, I gave my friends a short lecture. Trying to avoid overcomplicated vocabulary, I explained that the tournament was founded by King Erevedi and it's held on the Rushlight River. All sorts of champions gather from across the river kingdoms. Uh, there are, they are there, they compete in fishing, a highly respected talent in these parts. The art of boasting and the skill of fighting when you're so drunk that you can hardly stand on your feet. I still don't understand why everyone thinks it's so funny. There are many other interesting competitions in the same vein. Uh, Alright, well, we'll head back then. Uh, let's rest first. Eat, eat some of our rations. Uh, manage. Uh, put her there. It's difficult to live without faith. Forgive me. All right. Eat some of those rations and get them out of our inventory. That I care. What is this? Oh, shit. What the hell is this? Watchful Omen. Let us strike as one. You've got to be evil, right? Fear gaze. It's a... Well, all demons. It's a demon.
It's like, come on, man. Fails to overcome the resistance level, okay. Dog is what? What's up with dog? I don't know. He is unable to move. Weird. Page from the cultist's diary. I wonder how bad it is that I managed to translate only half of the scroll for the ritual. Unfortunately, time is running out. I'll have to sort things out on the fly. These simpletons won't know any better. After all, oh, Pax Gromutra. I'll soon rip the soul from the daemon's paws, I promise. Will this ever end? I'm gonna go ahead and take all of it. The only thing left out here is Nod Rocks. Let's go over there. that. we got going on in the kingdom new phase in the life of your capital rebuild your capital into a magnificent city she'll have to wait uh she has nine days okay so i can start that in a in a, in a like a week essentially all right don't do that anymore. You there, you here. You drink too much work. I will. All right, let's see what's going on in here.
Gargoyle from the Horfrost tribe. Let's save. Uh, level 16. Monstrous Humanoid. Damage reduction 10 except for magic. Interesting. Oh, that probably just means from non-magical weapons. Okay. Do not falter. One down. Come here, back. Not that stab you. Not so bad. I thought it was going to be like, only magic really hurts them. Not hide from me. Okay, they're coming down here. I'm gonna step over here. See if I can block them a little. So it's come to this. Chaotic evil, okay. More gargoyles. Ow. Nerd. Stay behind. off on dog, didn't they? Anybody have a negative level? I saw that earlier, but I didn't know if I slept at all. I did. Okay.
That's only against undead, not evil. Um... Oh, I have a bewildering injury on me. Oh, I got you. Excellent. That's cool. Well, let's take all of that. Nowhere to run. step forward because they're going to start coming. Gross. That's Horfrost himself. Okay. Tristian. Repent. Okay, uh, dog? Dog, wait until after Thorgrim. Knock, knock, we'll come up here. Um, you will also cast haste. Dog. Still can't get past these three. Ugh. Hate that. Alright, well, wait it out, I guess. Tristian. 
walk up here. Can I reach you if I do prayer? Bro, I can. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Exposed. Dog can now get up here. Yeah, throwing bombs up a 40-foot cliff. Hey, man, whatever works, dude. Do we have, uh... We do have plus for 110 more rounds. We're fine. He doesn't move, why... Why didn't you move? This is great for me. Excellent. He came closer. What is he doing? Alright, well, whatever. Come on, fellas. There we go. Let us strike it one. Look at his daggers, holy weapon, holy lance, holy crap. Watch her. Meow.
They zooming. Alright, I think that's it for this region as well. Like, unless there's something south of here, but... Not really an easy way to tell... Oh, in, unless we just head over there. Peaceful travelers on the road. Oh, it's this guy. Hey, what's up, buddy? Show me your wares. Can't use that. Uh, I don't want that. I don't want that. Oh, uh, let's see. Was that a wand of crushing despair? We'll sell that. You got. Uh, newest to oldest. Lycanthrope Bane. Flaming Corrosive. Interesting. They're giving us weapons that have double abilities sonic and electric on the trident what is speed anyway we're making a full attack they can make one additional attack okay Plant Bane. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, we'll sell all that garbage. Alright, man, we're out of here. Plant Bane makes sense on a sickle. Yeah, either that or a scythe. Hey, success! Aggressive expansion. Now it takes less time to expand. Alright, I guess we should go back to our city? Is there any place else I can get? I'm pretty sure I've been everywhere. Uh... Well, that's gonna follow me. Hold on. Uh, okay, there's a couple of places over here I have not gone. Okay. We'll go to the capital. March, march. All I do is march. Actually, let's cross the river. Search into the natures of curses Vorticae, Arcane plus five. Right. Is there anything you can do? The runaways? And the walls have ears. Let's send Lindsay on that one. And we'll send Octavia on the runaways. That's ten days? That's nothing. Let's that's fine. Go for it. Octavia for the runaways makes sense too, since she was a runaway. You can eat everyone.
Um, let's go to the throne room, see if there's anybody that wants to give me stuff. I want that dude to finish with the onslaught armor. Well, that's not him. Huh. Jays, a middle-aged halfling woman in tattered traveling clothes. Uh, greeting, your highness. Thank you for agreeing to see me. My name is Jays. I'm a pre priestess of Desna. Uh, who accompanies us on our journeys. The fame of your land has reached my doorstep with a request. Desna protects those who spend their night out in the open. Please help me and my associates create shelters for such travelers. Roadside shrines to, to the goddess. It will not take much, but the hundreds of travelers who pass through your lands will thank you for your for in their prayers. Where are you from? Far away. Uh, there was once a time that I, like my ancestors, served a noble family in Cheliax. But praise Desna, I escaped, and I was picked up by a caravan of Varegians. Ever since there, fate has led me along many roads uh, in many lands, both bad and glorious. Uh, and truth be told, I have no wish to recollect my homeland. Uh, what good are the shrines if we already have pubs and taverns? And what if the seeker has no coin, or the owner refuses them entry because he has no means to wash? No, a shrine in Fdesna is more than just a hotel. It's a place where every tramp is welcome, for the mistress of the shrine makes no distinction between rich and poor. Many a shrine is easy. Uh, making a shrine is easy, of course. We'll build an altar, pull out some stumps, clear an area, and we're done. But the unseen presence of Desna will remain, protecting every corner of your lands. None will dare... I'm sorry, I lost my place. None will dare attack anyone sleeping in the shade of such a shrine. Why do you propose this to me? Because everyone in the lands knows that you are a good king, one who will protect every soul, and who will not simply leave the poor and sick to fight their fates alone. Your subjects follow your example and are likewise kind and hospitable. I have no doubt that Desna loves you and all those who travel in your land. I will be able to shrines, but only if those they welcome will abide by my laws. The road tempts all kinds of travelers, but there are a few lost sheep reason to deny care and protection to everyone. Uh, I do share your hope that evildoers will still clear, er, steer clear of these lands. My companions and I uh, will await your news. When you are ready, uh, we'll begin right away. So build some shrines. That's easy. Emo bows to you. Forgive me for not coming to you for so long, and please accept this humble gift and my final gift to you. She has rejected me. She will not listen to my pleas. My work has no sense anymore, just as my life. I shall bid you farewell, farewell, for farewell and leave these lands forever. Do not despair. I'm glad to see you back. We'll think of something, I promise. But for now, you must go rest, as you wish. So he said he gave me his final gift. I don't know what it was. Uh, he has not marked it either. Build Desna's shrines. Okay, simple enough. Talk to Kimo. Strength four. This is strength and deck uh, uh, and con, but she has no con. That's worthless for her. This is con two. This is strength and con four. That's dex two. Strength 4, let's go Strength and Con 4. That had no effect. Okay. Okay. Good. Alright.
Uh, Kellid Tribal Fetish needed uh, three out of five. One, two, three. Oh, there's only four. I thought that was the fifth one. Uh, the ring, I don't have enough. Ancient Sky Metal. Seventeen, Jesus. Uh, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Rune covered leather. I only need two more. I don't have anything. Sad. This. Let's see what that's worth. Uh, I found a remarkable artifact. Thank you for your help. I hear clinking. Uh, someone laughing and chatting. I smell engine oil and burning insulation. This must be the Technic League. Time passes. People change. Five items of the Technic League. Okay. Desna's Shrines. Harem or Tristian? Tristian's done in five days. Harem is done in 25. Alright. Where is... What's his face? Oh, it's him. It's ready. I brought you something. Quiver of Lightning Arrows. Thank you. I was just going to go talk to him. North Gnarl marches. That quiver of lightning arrows is not is the same thing I've already got, isn't it? Uh 1d6, 1d6. Yeah, it's the same thing I've already got. I guess I could get a second stack of lightning arrows. Like that. I have 40 I can use. Let's see if we can talk to Kimo. North Gnarl Marches. Oh, I'm way past it. Tell me what wrong, went wrong between you two. I don't know. Everything went well on our first date. We spent every day together. We talked and gathered flowers. We watched the clouds pass. And then one evening she said goodbye and hid herself in her tree. She hasn't shown her face or said a word to me ever since, no matter how many times I've asked. What do you mean she hid in her tree? She's a dryad. Her body and spirit are tied to an oak. She takes care of it and protects it. I met her when I was in the forest, trying to find my way into the settlement. Show me where on the map I can find her. But you can't help. Her heart knows no mercy. You can't change her wooden mind. 
Where do you hail from? Hi, Anon. Why did you leave? So he won't tell me where she is. Talk to the Dryad. On the Fey Glade. Where is that? Probably not far, right? He fell in love with the tree lady? Well, I mean... Fey Glade. Go over there. She's ready to put down roots. Damn. Got him! recognize a dryad that you saw some time ago with a drunken satyr. Her skin glistens like polished wood. Her head is crowned with a mane of grass and leaves. Here you are. I knew you'd come and try to change my mind. Kimo talks about you every day, you know. How did you end up here? What did you mean end up? I live here. I grew in this forest together with my magnificent oak. If there's anything who ended up here, it's you. Why have you rejected Kimo? Maybe I just grew tired of him? I don't even know. He's so two-dimensional. There's no intrigue to him. Everything he does is so predictable. All the flowers, all the compliments. I have enough. Thank you. Sad. Well, I lost my uh, I lost my artist now. He fell in love with the dryad, and the dryad rejected him. He said, "Go tell the dryad to love me again." And I went and talked to the dryad. She was like, "Ah." <laughs> now I gotta go tell him his his girlfriend shot me down too. We failed to check that we needed a roll of three or higher for. Yep. Welcome to D&D, man. I bet you if I'd tried that one where I needed a roll of like 12 or higher, that one would have succeeded. Weird. I had a chat with your dryad. Go to her, she's waiting for you. Thank you. I hope it works. I hope he goes to her and she's like, all right, fine. Or she could just like straight up kill him, who knows. Uh, he'll find out. He'll either be fine or he'll be dead. Yeah, exactly. There's only two results. March, march. All I do is march. All right, how do I upgrade the, the capital into a city?
Hunting season failure, but plus one loyalty because of that. Weird. An artist's freedom failure. Last Wall's cavalry failure. Last Wall's cavalry failure. <laughs> Beast for the Afflicted. The Last Resort. Who can do that? Uh, Ragongar. He's doing the Giants, which will be done in a day. Okay. March, March, all I do is March. The Giants triumph. There was something he could do. Oh, last resort, yeah. Go succeed at that, would you? Disaster. Man. Trial of the Daring Lord. Success. Strong Nation. Success. Dress the Kingdom. Disaster. Let's exit out of here and get back in so I can see who can do what. Plus there may have been somebody that came to town. Nope. Desna's Wayside Shrine. Uh, counselor, treasurer, or curator. Ah. Get her started on that. Desna's Way Shrines will send Tristan on that one. Tova. days for that one. Okay. Success. Restoration of the Silver Shield Fortress. Excellent. Runaway is failure. Search in the nature of curses, Tartuck, 60 days. 
scythe tree 45 days. Let's do scythe tree. Alright. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here for tonight, everybody.